Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another weekly challenge with Taylor Bluemail and I. Now, I know it's been a while since we posted. Um, it's been a few months. And we have been doing things, just not this. So Taylor and I are going to give this another shot. This time, we're going to be more consistent. For those of you who've been watching this series, you've known that we've tried all kinds of different challenges such as shooting at 50 millimeters, leading lines, texture, motion, and many more. For those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, Taylor and I started this YouTube challenge as a way to kind of help each other grow and give each other feedback on our filmmaking, even though we live in separate areas. Taylor lives in Oregon and I live here in Denver. I actually just moved here last month. So every week you can expect completely different landscapes and environments because we're living in completely different areas. So not only are these challenges our ideas, but they're also your ideas. So in the comments below, go ahead and let us know what we should do for future challenges, as well as let us know what you think about the videos and who you think came out on top. And that's another really cool thing about this challenge is that every week Taylor and I go out and shoot the same thing, but we're not really shooting the same thing. We're shooting completely different things because one, we live in different areas, and two, we have different perspectives, and three, we each have our own skills strengths and weaknesses. Taylor and I were always going out and filming by ourselves and it just after a while it got kind of boring that there wasn't more of a motive, there wasn't more of a, a way to make it more interesting. It was just us going out by ourselves and filming. So we wanted to do this as a way to kind of help each other grow and give each other feedback and just make going out and filming every day or every week more fun. It gives it, it, gives it more of a purpose. We need a long exposure time lapse right now of these rapids and since it's really taking pictures and not video I'm sure. going to record the, the sound of the river okay. with my audio recorder I'm going to lay that over the time lapse very cool and I know Taylor has not thought about that because Taylor's not as smart as me oh so, burn so. yeah this is what we're working with today so I am really stoked that we're doing this again. Um, even though we haven't been doing this these last few months, it's just always been in the back of my mind. It's always been like, we need to do this again. We need to start it again. Because honestly, I think it's just a great idea. I really don't see any other YouTubers doing this kind of challenge. And I think they're missing out because one, it's a great way to collaborate. Two, it's a great way to get different audiences, you know, Taylor's viewers are watching my videos and vice versa. And it's just a really cool way to do something cool with someone else who's creating. So I don't know, I think this is a really cool idea and I'm really excited to start doing this again because like I said, it's just been on the back of my mind forever and I keep thinking about it even though we haven't been doing it. As far as the whole YouTube challenge, I think this is a pretty original idea. I'm sure there's other people out there doing it. I just haven't found anyone else who's doing it. So Taylor and I used to work together and go to school together back in Iowa and, you know, I always have really enjoyed working with Taylor. He's an awesome dude, pretty funny. He can be pretty weird sometimes. Like if you guys have ever like been around Taylor and he's comfortable with you, you can like really see his weirdness, which is it's funny. But anyways, let's get into the challenge. So this week we chose something that's very, very broad. It can be interpreted in so many different ways. It's crazy. But the challenge this week was water. Nothing else, just water. It could be water dripping out of a faucet. It could be rain. It could be streams, rivers, ponds, lakes, anything, anything that involves water. So this one was really, really kind of wide open. So for my challenge, so for my video, I really tried something new and experimented and I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. So let me know what you guys think. Um, it's cool and um, yeah. I think that the whole idea of this challenge series is to try new things and experiment that way when we do take on clients or find work, we can find, we kind of like, know we've kind of like tested the waters a little bit. So without further ado, let's go check out the videos from this week's challenge of filming water. So let's go ahead and see what Taylor shot for this week's challenge. And then after we watch his video, we're going to go straight to my video and you guys can decide who you think came out on top this week.
Jesse. So going into this challenge, I had a pretty good idea Taylor's going to do something with a waterfall because I know he's been out chasing them. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, Taylor's video was really great and let's dive into what I liked about it and let's dive into what I didn't like about it. So first thing, Taylor did a really great job of framing his shots. The composition was really great in, most, in the majority of the shots. That's something I've started to notice about Taylor's footage um, now that he got some awesome new gear. He's been going out and doing more tripod shots, locked off shots, and focusing on framing a shot. And now that Taylor has the FS7, his color and all his videos look so good. So he's at a little bit of an advantage there because he has a very nice cinema camera and I still have a pretty nice mirrorless camera, but, but the difference in the quality between the two is pretty immense. And Taylor did a great job with the coloring in his footage, um, the blues and the green. The blues and the greens all had a very like relaxing feel to it. The shadows, the shadows in his shots had a lot of detail, which is a big thank you to his FS7, which I do not have. So he does have a little bit of an advantage with that camera. I would say my two favorite shots was the wide painting shot of the waterfall going down with, and then he did a little time remapping, so he slowed it down and sped it up. My other favorite shot was my favorite, mainly because it was a lot different than the rest of his shots. It was at the top of the waterfall looking out, because you can see the trees, they have that nice yellow warmth feeling. And then you got like the blue coolness of the water um, at, from the top of the waterfall. I also like how the rocks cut from the top left down to the bottom right, kind of slicing through the image and this really gives you a good way to look at everything that's going on in that image. Something that I think that Taylor could have added to his footage was something that I think I could have added to my footage as well, and that's incorporating a person. It also really helps with scale, so you could really see how big that waterfall was if there was st someone standing right by it. However, the last shot in his video did have a shot of him climbing a rock, which I thought was a really nice touch, but still I think just having that person throughout the whole video really adds that dynamic and makes the video a little more personable, seem more interesting seeing someone in a landscape because then it's kind of easy for people to picture themselves in that landscape seeing someone else walk around. There was one shot too where um, Taylor was handheld and it just, I don't know, it was like kind of like a little movement to the footage and it just, I don't think it really added anything to the video. I think he kind of half-assed that shot and I really don't see any reason as to why it should have been in the video. What I was really surprised is I thought for sure Taylor would get some really close up shots, macro shots, um, because it has a macro lens. So I was really expecting some really tight shots of like rapids or water flowing, like, like the, kind of like the abstract feel. But So let's go into my video. So my video, I started off and I was really just struggling. I wasn't feeling anything I was f shooting. I wasn't really feeling anything. Plus it didn't help that there was a ton of people in the area that I was trying to film. There's a ton of people tubing and rafting and camping next to the river, playing music. So it's just like, I got really frustrated at first. Another thing too is just, um, I didn't really do much planning. I just I was like, I'm just gonna show up and film. And I think that's, so I think that really affected my video because I don't feel like I put enough effort into it as I should have. One thing about going out and filming, it's really important to have somewhat of an idea of what you're going to film or maybe screenshots of other people's footage or maybe just shot lists that you want to incorporate into your video. That way you can have something visually 
to look at to see, all right, I need to get this shot, this shot, and this shot. Um, also, I'm really interested to see what you guys think about the voiceover that I use. So if any of you guys have heard of ASMR, it's kind of like a really relaxing way to like speak directly into your microphone. Um, it's kind of like soothing and relaxing and like really airy. So I really tried to go for like an ASMR voiceover that meshes with the video and I tried to just make it very like, soothing and relaxing as if like you were meditating on a rock and just listening. <laughs> but anyways, I felt really weird doing it and I still kind of feel a little weird watching the video, but I don't know, maybe, maybe it's something I'll use in the future again. So let me know what you guys think about that because yeah, that was just something I thought I would throw in there. And another thing that I was really stoked about was getting a time lapse of the waterfall and a time lapse of like, the rapids. Um, I've been wanting to do long exposure time lapses for a long time and I just haven't got around to it. So like I said, these challenges are a great way to try new things or try things that you've been wanting to try and have more meaning or have more purpose of doing them. So let us know in the comments below what you guys think about this challenge. Um, if you're excited as we are that we're doing this again, let us know who you think footage was better, mine or Taylor's, what you liked about either or, or what you didn't like. If you have uh, any cool ideas of challenges that we should be doing in the near future, just let us know. Uh, drop some ideas in the comments below because we love hearing feedback. I hope you're stoked for what's coming next.